Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Diego <laughs> with the beautiful Karina, my lovely Prometita. And we're waiting for our K-1 visa to get adjudicated at the service center in California, Surf City. And my fiance, Karina, is from Caracas, Venezuela, but she is a legal resident of Bogota, Colombia. And I live in the Panhandle of Florida, near Pensacola, north of Navarre Beach. <clears throat> and Navarre Beach is where we're gonna get married as soon as we get this visa adjudicated. And it just takes time. It's a process, right? You guys are going through it, we're going through it. Our NOA one letter uh, is dated April 18th, 2022. But this video is about US Embassy processing and a little bit about the country in Brazil. Beautiful Brazil, and Karina has family living in Brazil. Karina went to Venice. Uh, Karina from Venezuela went to Colombia, and her brother from Venezuela he went to Brazil. Smart guy. Come on along. Now Brazil is called officially. Its official name is the Federative Republic of Brazil, and is the largest country in South America and Latin America. So it's the biggest. Okay. And Brazil is also the world's fifth largest country by area and the seventh most populous. Uh, the capital is Brasilia and its most populous city is Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo, excuse me. Correction, Sao Paulo. And the Federation of Brazil is composed of the union of the 26 states and the federal district. Like the United States is made up of 50 states and Washington DC, which is the district. So Brazil is kind of like the USA uh, in that regard. Now, it is the only country in the Americas to have Portuguese as the official language. That's good. Now, Brazil is bounded by the Atlantic Ocean on the east, and Brazil has a coastline of 4,655 miles. That's a, that's a lot of hiking and walking, right? It borders all other countries and territories in South America, except for Ecuador and for Chile. And uh, Brazil covers roughly half of the continent's land area. So it's huge, a big country. Like I said, now the land area uh, of Brazil, the land area now, is uh, 3,287,956 square miles including 21,411 square miles of water. So there's lots of land and I bet there's lots of fishing going on. North to south, Brazil is the longest country in the world, spanning 2,731 miles uh, from north to south. So it's a long country, the longest in the world. What an amazing fact that is. Brazil is also the only country in the world that has the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn running through it. It's the only country in the world, okay? And like I said, the official language of Brazil is Portuguese as per Article 13 of the uh, Constitution of the Federal Republic of Brazil, so it's in the Constitution. And uh, virtually almost everybody in the country speaks Portuguese, including it's in newspapers, radio, television, and for business and administrative purposes. And so the language is a national identity that's very important to this country, making it distinct from those of its Spanish-speaking neighbors. So Brazil's different, and they like it that way. And I like that too. Now let's talk about food, my favorite subject. Brazilian cuisine varies from region to region. Examples are feijoada, uh, which is considered the country's national dish, okay, feijoada. And they have regional foods, you know, such as beihu, feijão, tropiero, vatapa, moqueca, or moque, yeah, polenta. And polenta is basically an Italian dish that they took and converted it into a Brazilian dish. And acarache, which is from African cuisine. Now, a typical dinner, a typical meal consists of rice, beans, beef, and a salad, French fries, oh, Rico, and a fried egg. And often it is mixed with cassava flour, which is known as farofa, okay? They also like to eat fried potatoes, fried cassava, fried banana, fried meat and fried cheese, and they are often eaten in lunch and served in most restaurants all around this beautiful country.
Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm not an immigration attorney. I don't work for USIS. I don't give any legal advice, but I got years and years of experience processing K-1 and spousal visas. This is my second K-1 visa, boys and girls. And uh, United States immigrant visas are processed for citizens, citizens and residents of beautiful Brazil at the U.S. consulate in Rio de Janeiro, okay? Uh, and, you know, first of all, your sponsor, he, he or she files the I-129F petition for the applicant, you, Miss Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary, with USCIS. <clears throat> and then, uh, remember this, <clears throat> you cannot file the I-129F in Brazil. It has to be done in the United States by your U.S. citizen sponsor. Okay, and then once you go through all the hoops, it gets approved, and it makes it to the National Visa Center. The National Visa Center will send a letter to the U.S. citizen sponsor and the beneficiary telling him or her that the case, his case or her case is now at the U.S. consulate in Rio de Janeiro. Now, once your case is ready, remember you're looking for the ready status, <clears throat> is ready to be scheduled, you will receive, Mr. Sponsor, Ms. Sponsor, an email from the consulate with specific instructions that you must follow. Okay, remember, do not schedule your interview at this consulate in Rio de Janeiro until you receive the consulate's email. Okay, very important. And eligible children of K-1 applicants, they, they're derivatives that come in under a K-2. You must submit a separate DS-160 for you, Mr. Beneficiary, Miss Beneficiary, and for your kids. Okay, and then you must pay a separate MER fee or visa fee for you, Miss Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary, and each child. And all K-1 visa interviews, I repeat, every single K-1 interview, K-1 visa interview, K-2, is held at the U.S. Consulate in Rio de Janeiro. No matter where you live in Brazil. Okay? Alright, so you gotta go to, uh, you, you gotta find your way to Rio de Janeiro. Now, prior to the interview, once you get it set up, you paid your visa fee, you filled out the DS-160, etc., etc., okay? Prior to the interview, the beneficiary will also receive an email from the consulate. So it's important you have an email address, Miss Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary, living in Brazil. And this email will tell you what documents you need to get ready to, and how to schedule your interview, okay? You're going to need a passport for you and your kids, and you should have at least eight months of validity remaining on your Brazilian passport. And remember, the kids need their, the children, they need to have their own passports separately, okay? And uh, please bring a photocopy of the passport bio page also. So you got your passports plus a photocopy of the bio page. And also, please bring with you any previous passports from the past. So if you have any expired passports that have been hole punched, with any entry stamps or visa entry stamps, bring those to your interview too. Okay, you got that? It's easy. You also need to bring your birth certificates, Miss Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary, of you, the original birth certificate, and of your children, or you can get certified copies of the birth record for everybody who's gonna be leaving Brazil for the United States. If, you, and if any of your children were adopted, you must also submit a certified copy of the final ad adoption decree, okay? If you were married before, prior marriages, including you, Mr. Sponsor, Ms. Sponsor, applicants who have been previously married must submit an original divorce decree, original death certificates for the spouse, or any, or any original annulment orders, okay? If you served in the military, Mr. S Mr. Beneficiary, Ms. Beneficiary, if you, served in any, uh, if you served in the military of any country, you must obtain a photocopy of your military record. Court and prison documents are also required, so if you've ever served time in prison, okay, if you've been charged with a crime, you must obtain a certified copy of the full court record and any prison records, okay? Even if you were acquitted or benefited from an amnesty, a pardon, or any act of clemency. clemency. So don't forget that. <clears throat> police certificates. Applicants who live in Brazil must obtain a police certificate from each state in Brazil where they have lived for six months or longer in the last five years. So if you lived in five different states in Brazil, you need five different police certificates if you live there longer than six months. Do you understand that? 
Just like I live in Florida, I would have to get a police certificate for Florida, and I lived in New Mexico, I'd have to get a police certificate for New Mexico. Same thing applies, okay? And if you've lived in more than one state in Brazil during the last five years, you will need a police certificate from each state. If you can get your police certificate online, that is fully, that's totally acceptable by the U.S. Embassy. And now police certificates issued by Cartorio, Forum, or Poro Judiciario are not acceptable. The U.S. Embassy will not accept those, okay? And applicants 18 years or older and resident in Brazil, you must present a Brazilian federal police certificate and Brazilian state police certificates. So that's a lot of police certificates for Brazil. And if you have lived outside of Brazil for more than 12 months after the age of 16, you must also present a police certificate from the country where you live. So if you were in Brazil, in this state, in this district, and then you, you also lived in, let's say, Colombia for, you know, for six months or whatever, for a year, you got to get a police certificate from Colombia. Ooh, lots of police investigations, right? Now you're also going to need a sworn statement, and this is for K-1 visas only, and you, you, you know, you go, you go to this website right here and look for the uh, uh, fiancé sworn statement for singleness, I guess that's what you call it. You got to print and fill out the marriageable statement form. It's right here. I, I'll just put it up here on the computer so you can see it, okay? And you print that form and then you should sign it during your visa interview. So you get the form, you print it, you bring it to the visa interview and uh, you sign it in front of the consular officer. Do not take it to a notary or a cartorio to be notarized. Don't do that. Just take the blank form to the immigration interview and sign it in front of the immigration officer. All right? Okay. Piece of cake. Mr. Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary, you will be given directions from in the email to go to the Applicant Service Center or the ASC. You'll get directions on how to get to this particular place, okay? <coughs> you must register on the ASC website then here is where you pay the MER fee or the visa fee and then uh, you can then also pick and choose a delivery option for how you want to pick up your passport once the visa is put in your passport. Okay. Now on the ASC website you can schedule a visit to the ASC to collect your photo and your fingerprints, that's your biometrics, then schedule the visa interview at the US Consulate General in Rio de Janeiro. It's easy. You go to this ASC website the information is given to you by the National Visa Center in an email, okay? And you just follow the directions. So, you print your appointment confirmation page and bring it to the ASC. And uh, you will not be interviewed at the consulate if you do not first complete the ASC registration and biometrics page or biometrics collection. And then you schedule the interview, pay the Murphy, and plus all your dependents, you, you know, applying with you, and you're good. That's it. And contact the ASC for all appointment and scheduling questions, passport delivery, etc. And you will get all this information, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in an email. All issued K-1 visas will then be delivered via the Applicant Service Center, or the ASC. And applicants are notified by email when the visa documents are ready for pickup at the um, uh, ASC. And applicants have got to prove who they are. <laughs> Bring your identity your passport, uh, driver's license, photo ID, etc. And you can also choose to receive your documents to, brought to your house or any other designated address, okay? Or you can pick them up yourself at the nearest ASC branch. And the ASC will keep your passport only for 30 days and uh, <clears throat> the US, you do not pick up these visas at the consulate. You pick them up at the ASC or they are delivered to you. Now the good news is, in fiscal year 2022, 669 K-1 visas were approved by the U.S. Consulate in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And uh, the busiest month was February. And uh, the address to the U.S. Consulate is right here. I'll just stick it in here for you. That's the address where you go for your visa interview. And then right up here, that's the phone number. That's the phone number. And the embassy is open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday except for US holidays and Brazilian holidays and uh, if you want to learn more about the, the uh, US Embassy and the US Consulate in Rio de Janeiro and K-1 visa processing go to this website right here okay ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it's Diego 
Soon you will have your K-1 visa and your K-2 visa in your passport flying on an airplane to the United States of America. And uh, relax during this process. Don't stress it. Just be patient. It's a, it's a stressful up. It's a stressful evolution. I understand that. And you'll get through it. You will, I promise you. And <coughs> excuse me, don't forget the live stream on Mondays. Uh, <laughs> Don't forget the live stream on Wednesdays at, at 5 p.m., uh, Saturdays at 7 p.m., and Sundays at 11 a.m. Ask me questions and see if you can trip me up. I'm here to help you. Thanks for watching. See you at the live stream. Okay, I'll talk to you later. See you later. Bye.